and welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm Amani Forrester, author of the book, 30 Reasons Why Men Deserve Nothing. It's available right now on Amazon. It's free to read if you have Kindle Unlimited. And now you can find it available as an audiobook on Audible as well. We also have a Patreon for videos and deep dives that might be a little too much for YouTube. All links are in the description. Finally, I don't know what's going on in these YouTube streets these days, but many of you are being unsubscribed without your knowledge or consent. So please make sure to check that you're still subscribed and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a video. Now let's jump into today's topic. Looks like the passport bros have taken yet another L. As many of you know, a lot of them have been unalived in Colombia earlier this year. And just yesterday, the Daily Mail came out with an article reporting on the tragedy that befell a 26-year-old YouTuber named Elliot Eastman, who had moved to the Philippines and married a local woman. Let's get into the article. The article says horror befalls an American YouTuber weeks after he revealed he's moved to the most dangerous area of the Philippines. An American YouTuber spoke about having moved to the most dangerous area of the Philippines just a week before he was kidnapped. Elliot Eastman, 26, was pew-pewed in the leg and abducted by gunmen pretending to be police officers who spirited him away on a speedboat, according to local authorities. The Vermont native had been sharing his life online after moving to the southern Philippines where he married a local Muslim woman in Cebuco. Just weeks before he was abducted, Eastman posted on a Facebook live stream saying that he was afraid of living in the area where he had been for about five months, according to police. He said, quote, as long as I'm here, my life is still at risk, you know? And that's what he had said on a live stream on September 22nd. He said, that's the reality, especially the area that I'm in. It's not even just the Philippines. That's their wedding photo. And he says, this area that I'm in is like the most dangerous in the country. So it's literally like, so it's literally like the red zone. Eastman added that, quote, of course he was scared, but not as much as he was at the beginning of his time in the Asian country. He said, quote, there's nights I'm afraid, there's times I'm afraid, but it's gotten better. In the past, I've had a hard time sleeping at nighttime. And these are all red flags. This reminds me of Gavin De Becker's book, The Gift of Fear. It's like something was telling you, your instincts were telling you that you were in danger. But I feel like a lot of these males, they are hurt by the patriarchy because they learn to ignore their instincts, especially when they're of a certain ethnicity as well. They believe when they go to POC's countries that they're going to be treated like, you know, kings, they're untouchable, he's a man as well. So it's like, if anything criminal is to happen, if anything violent is to happen, it'll probably happen to a woman or a girl. I feel like a lot of them think women and girls need to watch out for their safety, whereas men, they don't need to worry so much about that type of stuff. Which man is gonna square up to another man just randomly, right? But no. He was somewhere where clearly they were opportunists. They saw a lone foreigner by himself and they thought, we can take him. Clearly, he's been kidnapped. But it's like men's sense of self-preservation is significantly dulled thanks to like this bubble of like, artificial security that's around them in a patriarchy. It's like maybe you're treated a certain way in the States, maybe you're respected in the States, but that doesn't mean that that's going to translate everywhere else in the world. But anyway, let's continue. When asked when he would return to the U.S. by one of the live streamers, Elliot replied he was not sure. If confirmed to be a case of kidnapping for ransom, it would be the latest reminder of the long-running security problems that have hounded the southern Philippines, the homeland of a Muslim minority in the largely Roman Catholic nation. In a bio under his YouTube channel, Eastman wrote, Hello everyone, I'm Elliot Eastman, I'm 26 years old, and I came to the Philippines about a year and a half ago, where I met the love of my life deep in the mountains of the red zone of the Philippines. This was his last live stream October 16th, not too long ago at all. This is a map showing where he was in the Philippines when he was taken. So on his social media, Elliot had explained that Zamboanga del Norte is a recently developed area of the Philippines that was once only accessible by boat. He said, I will be showing you my day-to-day -day life as the first and only foreigner to have ever lived in the Sibico for a long period of time. I'm from the USA. Police in Sibico town in the southern province of Zamboanga del Norte tried to pursue the suspected abductors and their victim after the reported abduction on Thursday night. 
quote, we confirm that there is a report of the alleged abduction of an American national, the regional police said in a statement. They said, we want to assure the public, particularly the community of Sabuco, that we are doing everything in our power to secure the safe recovery of the victim. The police asked the public to immediately provide any information that could help an ongoing investigation of the reported abduction. And a police spokeswoman told a news agency that so far, no one is asking for a ransom. Yikes, that's kind of worrying. Because it's like, if a ransom's not their motivation, then what is? I remember that I first heard about this story on TikTok, and people were saying that he was kidnapped for a ransom. But police are stating that actually there is no ransom request at this time. So it makes you wonder, like, what is the reasoning? And part of me is wondering, like, if it's not money, is it anger? Are they just mad to see a foreigner in their country married to one of their women sometimes? Sometimes they see these passport bros come into their country and they know why they're there. They know that they're on, you know, either Smex tourism or they're there to marry one of their women, and they don't like the idea of, quote, their women being taken by a foreigner. It makes me wonder, is it some kind of form of mate guarding? And then also, there's all these theories out there as well. People are wondering, like, who was his wife, really? Like, he had met her only a few months before marrying her. Was she involved in his kidnapping? Did she know about it? A lot of questions. Two police reports said that a resident of Sibuko reported to police that four men in black clothing who were armed with M16 rifles and introduced themselves as police officers forcibly took Eastman, who then tried to escape. One of the gunmen actually shot Eastman in the leg before dragging him into a speedboat and fled by sea, further south towards the provinces of Bissalon or Sulu, the police report said. Policemen chased but failed to find the gunmen and Eastmen and alerted other police and Philippine Marine units in the region, according to the reports. The southern Philippines has bountiful resources but has long been hamstrung by stark poverty and an array of insurgents and outlaws. So that's what the article had to say. And I do recall, you know, watching some people reacting to this story and someone had said that, like, He's not a wealthy foreigner. He's not like a wealthy passport bro who owns like tons of companies or anything like that. The place he chose to live shows you that he didn't have a lot of money. He wasn't coming in with a lot of money, but you know, you go to these foreign places, you have a certain skin tone and people just make the assumption that, hey, you're a wealthy American. So if they are looking for ransom, it is kind of worrying because it's like, would he have the money to pay them if they requested money from him? And if he explained, hey, I don't have that kind of money, what happens then? Let's go to the comment section really quick. And then I guess I'll just give you guys my final thoughts. So one person writes, the level of insanity is off the chain. What would possess you to do something this reckless and dangerous? And then another person says social media. And someone adds, it has destroyed his generation, sad. And that's something I thought of as well. It's like you're going to live in this incredibly dangerous area of this country that locals even warn about. Like, locals are scared of this place too. They call it the Wild West, you know? You call it the Red Zone. You're very aware that it's a dangerous place. And yet you're filming yourself. You're live streaming. You're showing your home and everything like that. It, like, don't you think locals are watching? You're putting a whole target on your own back. I, I don't get it. Very naive. Like another person says, think of all the views he'll get now. Wow. This person named Henrietta says, it blows my mind. When someone who lives in one of the greatest countries in the world, yes, e yes it is, no matter how much anyone tries to disagree, chooses willingly to move to a part of the world knowing all the perils that come with it. If he ever gets rescued, hopefully he will wake up and get the H out. Hey, I hope so too. Hopefully he has a chance to learn his lesson. Someone else says, never step off the reservation. Yeah. The crazy thing is, it's not like he didn't know he was somewhere dangerous. He knew he was somewhere dangerous. And he said he had a hard time sleeping at night. Like, your gut is telling you. Your instincts are telling you. I'm not safe. It's not even safe to sleep. But he just ignored it. Someone says, these people go all over the world doing this nonsense for clicks. Hope this stops the trend. The trend of passport bros looking for cheap smacks and stuff like that? I don't think so. I don't think it's going to stop, to be honest. They've heard about the guys in Colombia, and I don't think they've stopped. This person named Jimmy Jam 
says there are a lot of Americans and Europeans residing in the Philippines. Most stay in the Vasillas or Manila area. Mindanao is notorious for violence, and most Filipinos think of it as the Wild West sort of place. Someone else named Home at Sea says, I've read the same thing. Young men are moving elsewhere to find wives slash companionship. Sadly, Western women push this. Wow, are you kidding me? He got 13 thumbs up and 14 thumbs down. So this is Western women's fault. See, it's that dedication to a lack of accountability that's going to continue getting these guys taken out overseas. Women in the West cause this. We cause this, guys. We are the reason why Elliot was kidnapped, according to this commentator. That's crazy. That's crazy work. So because women have upped their standards, because women have set boundaries for themselves, because they're going to school, having an education, getting, you know, getting good jobs, making their own money, you have pushed these guys to go get kidnapped in other lands. You did it. You and me did it, guys. Crazy. If these people are so dedicated to not learning and to blaming women for all the problems that they put upon themselves, literally, they're going to go the way of the dinosaurs. Y'all are just going to go extinct due to your own bad decisions. You can blame women all you want, but the truth is, this man has been kidnapped, and we don't know if he's coming back. Somehow, I, th I feel like that was his own, his own lack of being able to decipher danger, his own failure to listen to his own instincts. You know, no one told this man to take himself from America to go to the Philippines, to go and live in one of the most dangerous places. If he wanted a nice Filipina wife, there's no Filipina Americans he could have found? For real? Come on now. And really, these guys will do anything except for go to therapy. If you're struggling to find things in common with the women in your own country, if every woman in the country is a problem, look at yourself. The common denominator is you. These guys live in Delulu land, though. Someone else says, where's the photo of his injury after he was shot trying to escape? Without the proof, I think this is yet another fairy tale story that a wannabe influencer invented out of thin air. Sorry, but if the shoe fits, how would he know what type of rifles his kidnappers had if he wasn't in on it all? And then someone else says he's missing. And it's like the first comment, it's like, did you just swallow a whole bottle of copium? Like you, you don't want to sit with the fact that this man put his own life in danger. You know, I'm not trying to victim blame or anything, but he decided to live in the most dangerous area that he knows no foreigners go to and live long term. Now he's missing and you want to say, well, he must have talked to some local guys with guns and just decided to pull a prank on the on the local police. I really think that they would do that. Yeah, you're coping. And the thing is, people cope when they're afraid. This person's afraid of what he's read in this article, so it's easier to gaslight himself and believe that this must be a made-up fairy tale story so that you can feel better when you go overseas as a passport bro, right? Delusional. Someone else just says, influencers. Okay, I guess I'll share my thoughts. If anything, this is just a cautionary tale for passport bros, of course, but also for anyone who decides to vacation in faraway places where they don't really know the customs or the language too well or the region too well, do your research, first of all. You know, be careful where you choose to live uh, if you want to move countries. And just know that there are safe and dangerous places in every country. And while nowhere is 100% safe, if even locals are cautious of a region, respect that. Take heed to their warnings. He knew he was somewhere dangerous, and yet he stayed. You know, I've also heard that some of these passport bros, they falsely assume that because they've married a local woman instead of just going on like a Smex tour, that they're going to be safe, that they're going to be left alone, that the men will respect that. But that's not always the case. That's not always the case. That doesn't guarantee you safety. The only hope now for Elliot is that hopefully his kidnappers decide for whatever reason to release him. Or if they are looking for a ransom... Hopefully they contact his family soon or the police soon and they, they ask for that ransom and they get it and then they keep their promise and release him. But yeah, those look like his only best case scenarios at this point. We have to remember that Elliot is injured. You know, he was shot in the leg. The leg has so many arteries, so many nerves. They could be damaged right now. Unless, hopefully, he's been taken to a hospital. Or unless these guys know how to treat his wound and remove the bullet and everything. 
but there is no way to know that. Being shot in the leg, I mean, you can experience significant blood loss or even damage to the limbs. And, and someone even pointed out that you can even get sepsis. So it's like, if he's not being treated, he's living on borrowed time. Just a very scary situation. And the saddest part is that he did not have to go through this. He could have found himself a nice woman in the States, or he could have decided if he wanted to live in the Philippines, he could have just lived somewhere much safer where other foreigners tend to live. But yeah, I mean, like they say, you F around and you find out sometimes. I will definitely be following this story. Hopefully it ends happily for him, but we'll see. But if things don't end up going well, I mean, there are passport bros that are already blaming us Western women for his disappearance. It's our fault for going to school and having standards and making our own money. We did this, guys. We did this to Elliot. Shame on us. <laughs> anyway, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Definitely. Make sure to like the video and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.